thank you this morning. Eternal Rock of Ages, we reference your only name. There is no one like you. Daddy, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. We thank you be a good God to us. Daddy, be thou exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, be thou glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Ever and lastly, Father, we commit this morning into your heaven one. Father, come and glorify yourself in the mighty name of Jesus. We call it thanksgiving service. Ever and lasting, Father, come and manifest yourself in our midst in the mighty name of Jesus. Come and perform wonder in our midst in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your name alone be glorified in our midst in the mighty name of Jesus. And I submit myself into your heaven and everlasting Father. Daddy, help me in the mighty name of Jesus. And let your will be done. In Jesus' and mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' and mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' and mighty name we have prayed. Good morning, Good morning church. Good morning, church. <laughs> God, we help every one of us this morning in Jesus' name. Yeah, before we go ahead, let's appreciate our pastor. Is not a, let's appreciate him, Pastor Fola Akili and Pastor Flores also. Let's appreciate him. We, we really, really appreciate you, Pastor, for your good work. Uh, God Almighty, we, we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. We bless your wife in the mighty name of Jesus. That which God has committed into your heaven, one, the same God will help you in, in the mighty name of Jesus. You will live, you will not die in the mighty name of Jesus. Everlasting Father, we perfect all that consigns you in the mighty name of Jesus. We really, really appreciate you for giving us the opportunity on this platform. Thank you very much, Pastor. God bless you in Jesus' name. We have prayed. And I appreciate every family of us of resurrection this morning. God will bless us in Jesus' name. All the minister being a good work, doing it all the time, God will reward you mightily in Jesus' name. The workers in us of resurrection, the Bible says, our God is not unrighteous to forget the labor of your love. For you coming early, doing what is right in the eyes of God. God Almighty will reward you mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. God Almighty will reward you mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. I appreciate every one of us for coming this morning. God will bless you. This morning, we know it's Thanksgiving service. If I'm going to follow my mind, I will just go on Thanksgiving. That is it. But when pastor told me that on Thanksgiving Sunday, you'll be the one, definitely that is what I believe. That Thanksgiving, you have no option. You can't be doing what you want to do. It's about Thanksgiving. Let's thank God for his mercy, for his love, for his compassion, for preserving our life. Our God deserves our thanksgiving. He said it in Luke 17. He said, are they not ten are cleansed? Where are the remaining nine? Definitely Jesus Christ himself is sitting down waiting for the remaining nine. Even the one that came back to say thank you, he called that person a foreigner. Where are my people? That is what is in my mind. Let's come for Thanksgiving. But there is a war, you know, we want to do something, but your heart is telling you, no, no, no. And I believe it is God that is speaking to me, and I obey. And, and I keep asking questions. Why, Lord? And he's telling me, and he's even showing me in the Bible. He said, the sacrifice of the wicked it's an abomination to the Lord. The thanksgiving of the unrighteous, unrighteous people is an abomination to the Lord. I didn't call you unrighteous. Please, get me right. The word might be for someone here. It might not be for every one of us. It might be for one person that God is still speaking to your heart. And I remember in Ezekiel, he told them, he said, even they are praising me, worshipping me. He call it, let them take away their noise from me. They are thanking him. They are appreciating him. He's telling this. They call it noise. I will not listen to their noise. They are thanking him, but he changes it to noise to them. Why? They are not following the pattern he laid down. So this morning, it might be for one person, but it might not be for people who are here, maybe online. God is going to speak to our heart in Jesus' name. Amen. God is going to change our heart in Jesus' name. He said, a new heart will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. 
do it the way I want it. It might be difficult, but God will give us the grace in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning topic, lest we are still in the mood of thanksgiving. Let it be in our heart. It's still thanksgiving. But obedient is the key. That is the title. Obedient is the key. The key that open many doors. The key that open many doors. And I'm trying to dictionary meaning what is the meaning of obedience. We all know it already. I'm just trying to. He said doing or willing to do what you have been told to do by someone in authority. That is obedient. Submissive to the will of another. That is obedient. Doing what God has instructed us to do. And we know we are not in a lawless kingdom. The kingdom we are, there is a law that guides us. Do it right. Don't do it. Do it that same way. Follow this pattern. That is the kingdom we are. We are not in a lawless kingdom that we can be doing whatever we are doing. We remember in Numbers 9 from 16 to 17, when they are going, the Bible told them, Moses is true, you are the leader. But this time around, the cloud, the cloud will be in them. They can as well tell Moses, no, we are not going to follow the cloud. No, 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 no. Because the Bible let us know, coming down, when the cloud move, they move. When the cloud stay, they are waiting. If they are sleeping in the night, if the cloud moves, all of them pack their socks, they continue to follow. We are not in a lawless kingdom. We are guided by principle. That is it. When the cloud move, they move. Numbers 9 from 17 downward. 16, 17 downward. When any time the cloud stay, they stay. When the cloud disappears, they pack their stops out, they keep following. Where is the cloud? Where is it? The journey, will, okay, it's in the East London now. They all run into East London. That is the pattern God asked them to follow. Obedient is the key. God will give every one of us the grace to obey him in the mighty name of Jesus. God will help every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. Obeying God and leave all the consequences to him. It doesn't matter. It may be tough. Obey our maker and leave the consequences. Let it be. I've obeyed you, Lord. Okay? And we know there's a blessing that followed obedient. In Genesis 26, 4 to 5. Genesis 26, 4 to 5. God is speaking to uh, Isaac. Yeah. And I will make thy seed to be multiplied as the star of heaven. And I will give unto thy seed all this country. And in thy seed shall all the nation of the earth be blessed. What is why? Why all this thing? Because that Abraham obeyed my voice. All this blessing, Genesis 26, number 5. All this blessing that Isaac you will enjoy, not because you are righteous, not because you are doing it perfectly, because your father Abraham obeyed me. Obedient is the key. Obedient is the key. But often and now we find it difficult to obey because we think we that are obeying, people that are not doing it, why is it working for them? Ecclesiastes 8, number 11. Ecclesiastes 8, number 11. Ecclesiastes 8, number 11. He said, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the Son of Man is fully set in them to do evil. Yeah, I'm doing it right. My neighbor is not doing it right and is moving on. There's a judgment set upon them. But because he's not doing quick, quick, quick. Okay, let me do, let me follow their pattern. He said, let me follow their pattern. Obedient is the key. Half obedient is disobedient. Delay obedient is disobedient. God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. 
God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. In Deuteronomy 28, 28, 1 to 2. Deuteronomy 28, number 1. If thou should hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, to do, yes, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, observe and to do all his commandments, if you will hearken diligently to do what God has asked you to do, and he continue to place the blessing. All these things will happen to you. You'll be blessed above nature. You'll be doing all these things. What God is waiting for is our obedience. Let's go to the test. 4 Samuel number 15. 4 Samuel number 15. We may read it at my story. 4 Samuel number 15. 4 Samuel. We all know the story. But I just want to point this out for us. And Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore, hearken thou unto the voice of the word of the Lord. Thou said the Lord of hosts. I remember, <laughs> if God can remember, I pray this morning, anyone is waiting for your downfall, all the accuser of your brethren, anyone that is running a task for your life, that is waiting for that is waiting for your obituary today. God will remember their faults, and God will judge them. 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 Will judge them. In the mighty name of Jesus, after four hundred years, God remember. It's been long. What happened to them is when they are coming out of Egypt. But for you who know this great God to punish them, he said to them, I remember. What did they do? He said, they did not meet Israel with water. Are they the one that sent them on journey? He said, when they are coming out of Egypt, they did not meet them. Okay, you want water? Take water. And they are planning evil against them. He said, because they did not meet Israel with what? They did not help Israel. In the, I'm telling you, please, as a Christian, our life is different. We are the salt of the head. If we are doing things and we know our partner or our fellow family or friends are struggling, let's do, let's extend a little, little help to support them. If God can remember, because they did not help Israel when they are coming out of Egypt, I remember now which Amalekite did to Israel. How they lay wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Number three, please. Now go and smooth Amalekite and utterly destroy all. Please, there's a word I want us to note here. All, all, all that they have and spare them not. All is all. And spare them not. All is all. And spare them not. But slay both men and women, if at and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and axes. Number four. And so gather the people together and number them in Tilma. 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. Yeah. And so came to the city of Amalekai and lay wait in the valley. Number six, and Saul said unto the Canaanite, go, depart, because it's Amalekai. Hey, Amalekai, they asked me to come and destroy. Canaanite, get out. You are, not in, you are not going to get punished. Leave these people. And they depart. Depart. Get out down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. Show because they show kindness to all the children of Israel when they come out up out of Egypt. So Canaanite depart from among the Amalekites. Yes. And it took a guy. Please. All is all. And it took a guy, the king of the Amalekites, alive. Number one mistake. All is all. And utterly destroy all the people with the edge of the sword. But one is still 
alive, which means they are king. Yes. But Saul and the people spear a guy and the best of the sheep. Oh. <laughs> Can I tell us not everything look like <laughs> I said it yesterday. Not everything that look like gold is gold. There is a plastic fake gold. When God is telling you, destroy them utterly. Spare not men and us, even their king, all of them. King is among them. Don't allow anyone to be alive. God is testing brother Saul. He know the hand from the beginning. He knew he would disobey him. God that is asking Noah, where are uh, uh, the, the, Adam, sorry. Adam, where are thou? He's in heaven. Looking down. And he's asking Adam, where are thou? Adam, where are thou? Where are thou? <laughs> he's like, <laughs> he's like giving, how tall I am now, giving Jeremiah 20 pounds. And I gave it to Jeremiah. And he hide it. He hide it. Jeremiah, where is it? 20 pounds. I don't know where is he. I can easily see. I can easily. He said, hey, damn, where are thou? He said, hey, I'm hiding. What? From the presence of God. Even David said, where will we hide from the blue God? Even in hell. Hell of fire. He said, he's there. Everywhere is there. In heaven, is there. Where shall we hide from you, my God? We can't run away. We can't hide from you. And this Mr. Saul cause problem. And what gets me annoyed is trying to shift all the blame to the people that follow him. But <laughs> he's trying to shift the blame when Samuel hear the bleating of the sheep. He said, no, it's not me. It's them that took it. That they want to speak. They want to sacrifice to their to God. To your God, to the God of Samuel, is trying to bribe Samuel. When God told you, all is all. Do it this way, do it that way. We are, all, we are not in a lawless kingdom. We are in a kingdom that will listen to the Holy Spirit. When in the book of Heart, they're talking about Holy Spirit. Is that which God gives to them that obey him? So know everybody that has Holy Spirit then. It doesn't matter. You might be in church 25. He said, which God give to them that obey him. You can't disobey God and you'll be telling me you are in the spirit or you'll be speaking in tongue. If at all we didn't say that, we know in our heart you are just bubbling. Eh? Wasting of time. If at all we didn't tell you, brother, you lie. We can see written over you that you disobey everything and everything. God will help us in Jesus' name. And the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatly and the lamb and all that was good I would not utter and would not utterly as disobey not utterly destroy them but everything that was vague and refuse they that they destroy utterly. Number 10, please. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. It disobeyed very early. This is that is the first assignment, sir. After being king, the first assignment, I definitely. God sees the heart. He knew. Maybe that is why he's telling me, if at all we are giving thanksgiving, jumping, singing, singing, is everyone heart perfect towards him? Ezekiel, please, media. Ezekiel 33. Let's read from 31. Ezekiel 33 from 31. God bless you. Ezekiel. Yeah, Ezekiel 33 from 31. Please, Ezekiel 33 from 31. Ezekiel 33 from 31 to 33. Yeah. 
No Ezra, Ezekiel, please. 33. 33 from 31 to 33. I can read it from here as well if you, if that one is going to be made. Okay. Ezekiel 33. Okay. 31 from 31. 33 from 31, not 31. From 33 to 31. Ezekiel 33 from 31. Okay. And they came unto thee as the people cometh, and they sat before thee as my people, and they hear thy word, but we not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. Number 30, but next one, please. And lo, thou art to them as a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument for they hear thy word but they do them not number 33 and when this cometh to pass lo it will come then shall they know that a prophet has been among them he said they will come Listening to the word of God, hear all these things, but they will still not do them. They will still not change their mind. They will still not change their heart. I also disobeyed God, trying to manipulate his way, right? Try to bribe God with all the animal, with everything he took. Samuel said, No, God is not a man that he should lie. To obey is better than sacrifice. To obey this good God is better than everything you are telling me, everything you are bringing. He said, it is the people that took it, they want to sacrifice it to your God. Ah, is this Samuel God, so is he in hunger? He didn't need food from anyone? He knew all those animals are there in the beginning. But he said, go and utterly destroy them. Most of us as a Christian, we think we are in a kingdom that we can do what we can do without listening to our God. That is why at times we keep repeating the same mistake, mistake, mistake. Until you pass that test, you are not going to the next level. That is how it works in this kingdom. If you pass the test of obedience, God will take to another level. Can I tell you, another test is still coming. That is how it works. Another test is coming. Maybe you are the head of your department now. God has made you the head of the department. And there's a pride in you. For you to serve them. Because how God put it, he said the greatest one among you must be the one to serve. For you to come down low to feed one serving them to pass the test. Not asking them, oh, you have not done it properly. No, that one is wrong. Go back, go and do it again. Go and do it again. No. We do it together. Then you pass the test. It will take you another level. God will give us the grace in the mighty name of Jesus. Because I don't know why God gave me this topic. Why? We're supposed to be jumping now, singing now. But if there is any spirit of obedience in us, God will crush them this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We all know this story. I don't need to go further. What happened here? Because of that, God changed the kingdom from Saul. He said, it repented me that Saul has very, very early depart from my following me. Not listening to me anymore. He said, to obey is better than sacrifice. Just obey God listen to him, follow him and let him be God. And let God show up. God will help us in Jesus' name. God will help us in Jesus' name. He said, if we willing and obey, obey, we will eat the fruit of the land. If we willing and obey, we will eat the fruit of the land. Exodus 19, number 5. 
Exodus 19, number 5. This morning is about obedience. Exodus 19, number 5. In any way we are doing it, anything that pertains to God, let's do it with all our heart. He says, serve the Lord thy God with all, not half-hearted. It might be tough, it might be difficult. Obedient, it might be painful, but the end result is gain. You will always gain. It might be tough. Why am I doing this thing? No one see me. They can't even say thank you. Why everybody desert me? Why this thing is too much? This but the gain is coming. Exodus 19, number 5. Yes. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. It might be difficult, sir. It might be tough. Hey, it, it, it never come easy unless we want to lie. It never come easy. No, obeying God never come easy. It never unless he said there is a way that seems right, but the end of it is what narrow is the way. Broad is another way. The narrow one is tough. Are you? Am I the only one? What about others? Why are they not getting involved? Why me only? Keep obeying. Keep obeying. Keep obeying. The art of God sees you. Very soon, that same God will advertise you to your nation. That same time, God himself will advise, advertise you to your world. See what happened to Joseph. Among all his brethren, is the one obeying his father. The Bible lets us know he always brings their report, the good report and the evil report. He followed the father pattern. Okay, you are not going to go and do this thing. But Joseph, daddy, they didn't do it properly. Oh. It's very wrong. Oh. No, they recognize you are the one spy among us. We are going to deal with you. But at the end of the day, the one that he dealt with, all of them bow. It's just a matter of time. Obedience is, don't tell me it's easy. Don't, don't tell me it's very, very easy. You need the grace to God to make it easy for you. Let's start from an example. Sir, how much are we earning in this country? If I told you, the more you earn, the more your teeth change, thinking change. If you are in, oh no, I need to change my, I need to change my setting. I need to change this thing because the money is coming. For you taking that title out of it. Eh? God bless you, ma. But it's a commandment. It's not negotiable. No, it's not. It's very... How much is it? Okay. If you can't pay when you are getting 10 pounds now, because 1 million is coming your way, that is God for you. The way God Almighty will bless us is different. It's different. See how God himself blessed Abraham living in Egypt where there is famine. Going, going to the Egypt with this guy the Bible says when Egypt, Abraham is living, is living, Abimelech said they should give him all the cattle, the goat, the sheep, everything. Take Abraham. Look at Isaac. Isaac has an option. There's a family in the land. He has an option. I can move, but God told him, don't go. Stay in the Egypt. That same place, continue to sow. Don't go because he has a plan, and there's a family again in Second King number eight. God told him, Elisha told that, that let him go. Go now to the land of Philistine. After the family, come back. If you can follow the pattern and the obedience, your heart will not lie to you. Can I tell you, as we are now, what I'm saying? The Bible says, Our uh, if the spirit are aligned together. The physical will manifest. If what I'm saying is right, your heart will be telling you he's saying the truth. He's saying the truth. He's saying the truth. But most of the time, we refuse to follow. Say, open my heart, O oh Lord. Open my heart, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Open my heart, O oh Lord. I am ready to obey. Hallelujah. Open my heart, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Open my heart, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Open my heart, O oh Lord. I am ready to obey. Hallelujah. 
upumaya to Lord. Hallelujah, upumaya to Lord. Hallelujah, upumaya to Lord. I am ready to obey. Our Father and our God, we thank you this morning for the little you have already shown us in your word. Obedient is the key. In this land, if we obey, we will hear the fruit of this land. God, economy does not determine wherever you are. Maybe you are in desert. Maybe the poorest country in the world. If you are there and you obey, <laughs> you will be envious of nation. Ever and lasting, Father, this morning we are in great, the country that is great already, Great Britain. Why are we in poverty? Because we find it difficult to obey you. We want to do it the way the world is doing it. We want to do it the way our friends are doing it. We want to cut corner. We want to beat the system. We want to shit the system. Many people are not sick. They are lying. They are connecting. They are very, very agile. They are very, very good. They can work and they are shitting the system that they have. This is, they can't work. They have rheumatism. They have arthritis. They can't see properly because they want to shit the system. How can the God that is holiness, the God of Holy Father, bless us in that way? He said, nevertheless, the foundation of God stands sure. Having this say, that God knoweth them that are his. Let everyone that name the name of God depart from iniquity. He said, in the greater house, there are many vessels for gold, for silver, for wood. But if anyone purge himself, you'll be ready for the master's use. God is not at fault. We are the one that is changing ourselves. Father, help every one of us this morning. And let your will be done. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed.